What's new at Charlie's? What's new at Charlie's? Still on Main. What's new at Charlie's? Tell me what's new at Charlie's? Still on Main. Hi, welcome back to another edition of What's New at Charlie's. Um, here with my good friend, Mr. Don Williams, the bourbon fool, executive bourbon steward. Don, we're going to step outside our uh, comfort zone again. You know, Charlie, <laughs> uh, you know, we got back to a bourbon for a while, and now you know we're going right back in a different direction. But these are interesting, and I'm anxious to try them. Yeah. So if you, were, if you remember, or if you haven't watched it, you can always go back and look on the the YouTube channel and find it a few months ago could have been a year ago I don't know they all run together at some point we did a courage and conviction uh, it was Virginia distilling company uh, it and they are kind of leading the way in single malt American whiskeys yep which is like which is what scotch is right a yeah most scotches that we know are single malts is what they've made their claim as and, and I'll tell you what they're leading the way on. What they're trying to do is they're trying to get a American standard in place for what is an American single malt. Correct. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So in Europe, a single malt is 100% single malt. In America, right now, they've been using anyone who uses 51% or better malt can still call it a single malt. And yet, these traditionalists like Courage and Conviction are trying to go to 100%. Which is what they do, correct? They're all 100% correct. Malt. Yes, correct. exactly. So, so anyway, so we try this. We, we both liked it. It was, you know, um, scotch-like, I guess you would say. It was. But, you know, it reminded you of a nice scotch, which isn't either of our ballparks, but we could enjoy it and re relate to it. So... Recently, I was uh, lucky enough to get a visit from Beck from the uh, Virginia Distilling Company, and she was awesome. Um, she uh, actually works at the distillery every day, and she was just out in the market visiting people that carried their product, and she had seen our video and stopped to see us. Um, and she taught me some things I didn't know, so I'm going to share them with you and Don. Perfect. Don may know them, but maybe not. I don't know. So what she explained to me was, this is their flagship whiskey. And the way they make this flagship whiskey is they have three different whiskeys. Uh, they have a, uh, I don't know which one's which. They have one they age in bourbon casks, one they age in a cuvee cask, and then they have a third one that they age in a sherry cask. And they, they do those all separate, all on their own. They, they, they don't use new charred American oak barrels like bourbon does. They're aged 100% in these barrels. And then, then what they do is they blend them together to get this final product. So I thought that was pretty interesting that they got all this stuff going on. So they originally only released this, and now they've come out and released the individual pieces of the puzzle. I'm kind of upset I don't have the sherry one here, so we can try all three, but I wasn't thinking this far ahead. Well, <laughs> sorry, Beck. I should have got all three of them. But anyway, these... So I, I'm going to go on record saying I've already tried these because I had to try them. But these were my two favorites, and they're 100% uh, different. So I think, uh, not to spoil the show before it gets there, but I think you're going to find that you'll like them. So um, but what, what have you found out now? Did I, did I tell you anything you didn't know? No, not really. But, oh, man. Uh, you, you know, but what, something I found that's really, really cool is the uh, – Cuvee cask. Yeah. Um, they actually are dismantled. Yeah. They shave them. They toast them lightly. And then they reassemble them and, and put the single malt in. It's a lot of work. It, it is a lot of work. Yes. And, and the idea is it brings new life in the wood. Okay. Uh, so that's obviously something I'm anxious to try. What yeah. is the effect on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on the standalone bottle. Yeah. Uh, and then the used, you know, the other one, the bourbon cask, you know, is more, I don't want to say commonplace. Sure. But it doesn't have the same work into it that the uh, cuvee cask does. Right, right. 
So if I remember right, they put 50% of the bourbon in and 25% of the cuvee makes sense now, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's too much work. <laughs> yeah, so 50% bourbon, 25 sherry, 25 cuvee. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, you know, I we liked that first one. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, we it, really did. it was yeah. different. Yeah. But now to see them stand alone, it's going to be interesting. And the founder of Virginia Dil Distilling Company, Dr. George Moore, was originally from Ireland. And he kind of brings that, old world mentality, traditional yeah. type practice and everything. And everything they work on is in hammered uh, pot stills. Yeah, I think they brought them from Scotland, if I remember right. I well, remember. maybe Ireland. but Or, or Ireland. I, uh, I'm not, I think, yes, I'm Beck not told sure. me they, I, they came from Europe, I'm pretty sure, that they brought them over here. So, you know, um, and created their whiskey in them. So, and it's all their product. They make it all. Right. It's not sourced, anything like that. So... Um, but uh, pretty cool. Let's, let's get a bottle open. I don't know if you got anything else there to go over. Well, I'm going to start with the bourbon, I think. Yes, I'm going to start with the bourbon cask. Yeah. So this is 50% of the, the blend. So you can obviously see by the color of this that, you know, it's not as dark as a traditional American bourbon. And that's typically because, A, they're using used barrels. Yep. And, B, uh, they don't necessarily age it through the same amount of cycles that American bourbon would. Right. Age. I got that out of the way. Set that off to the side and leave that there. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. So I get the bourbon notes. Right off the bat, man. Your typical vanillas, your butterscotch, your caramel. A lot of vanilla. But you can obviously tell that it's a, you know, a grain product. I mean, yep. you, can, you can just tell right away. Mm -hmm. That's... That's interesting. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not necessarily my flavor profile. Right. But it's very interesting. And if you like single malt, you're going to want to try that. Oh, definitely. So now let's, let's check out the cuvee. So you can see right off the bat, a lot more color. A lot more So color. the cuvee barrels had a red wine blend from either Spain or Portugal, if I remember right. And that's, that was their first lifetime. And depending on what you read... Cuvee sometimes means the most select wine, or in other worlds, it's just a blend of wines. Yes. You know, it depends on who's doing the talk. And a lot of times it's champagne, which kind of confused me. Was this your fresh glass? Yes. Okay. That's a fresh yeah, yeah. So, originally I thought it was a champagne cask, and then she explained to me that it wasn't. It's a red wine cask. So, and I mean, if like I said, I'm going to get this out of the way. You know, when you put them side by side, big difference there, huh? Right. Yeah, especially these two. Yeah. Yeah, big so, difference. Yeah. Even in the glass. It's oh, a sure. Big difference. Yeah. Cheers, man. Let's try this one. Really smooth. Totally different from the other one. Yeah. Um, Red fruit, yeah. the fruit comes through. Yep. You know, you yep. can tell that it's the one that was aged in wine cask. It seems a little sweeter to me than the other one. Not like super sweet, but a little sweeter than the original. Are you getting that, that nutty finish on the back end? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Even though that traditional single malt finish is still there, right? It lessens it or it it changes it a bit with with the red wine added. What I love about it is two very basic single malts 
barrel or cask aged in a different way, two different flavor profiles. Completely different. Really different. Completely different. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't even know they were the same product if uh, if Beck hadn't told me. Yeah. Now I'm anxious to go back and try the original one again because yeah. because I don't remember us picking up all of those flavors. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, we should probably just do it then, right? Well, I don't. Let's just do it. We're here. I mean, if there's anything better than tasting two whiskeys, it's three whiskeys. Now, see, that's exactly what I remember. It's more of a traditional single malt. Yeah. Yep. You, you do not get the highs and lows of the other two. It's a blend. The blend takes it out. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very traditional. Now, that is a great single malt flight here at Charlie's. Yeah, no kidding. There you go. Come in and give it a try that way. Yeah. Maybe we have to put that on the menu that way. We'll look into that. I, I really think that if you're interested in single malts, that would be a great way to try them. It's really cool to taste the difference between this one, this one, and then the final product, which is this one, um, is, is really nice. So uh, that was fun, dude. Virginia Distillery, keep it up. Yeah, man, you got it going on. And, nice job, Beck. And keep, uh, keep pushing for those uh, official, you know, um, standards. Standards. Yeah. Because I think that's a good thing. And, Absolutely. Uh, I think that uh, standardizing the product puts everybody on a level playing field and then whiskey drinkers benefit from it. Absolutely. You know what you're getting when you buy it. So, you know, which was what started the Bottle and Bond Act. That's right. As, you know, giving a standard for people to live up to. So, uh, Don, thanks again. Really good. Cheers, Cheers, my friend. Thank you, folks. Thank you. What's new in Charlie's still on Main? What's new in Charlie's? Tell me what's new in Charlie's still on 